CH is true here, and today I want to talk about left and right, and this kind of left-right paradigm that I think has oppressed politics now for some time. It definitely was useful during and after the French Revolution to describe a real difference between supporters of the king versus supporters of the republic. But it has long, uh, it has long outlived its usefulness. In fact, it's mutated to such an extent that I think it's no longer useful. I believe, in fact, that it is counterproductive. Uh, I have here in my hand something I just read. Um, it's by Robert Anton Wilson, kind of a stand-up philosopher comic, um, a genius wordsmith. Uh, he writes in a, a very humorous style, or did when he was alive. And uh, I definitely admire a lot of his writing and a lot of his perspectives. And it's entitled Left and Right, A Non-Euclidean Perspective by Robert Anton Wilson. And you can find it online. And what I think is fascinating about it is that he almost took the thoughts right out of my brain. Um, or I took it out of his, since I guess he wrote this first. But <clears throat> the idea being, from his standpoint, that this linear spectrum of right and left just doesn't work. It's Euclidean. It comes from the old paradigm of pre-19th century geometry, whereas from the 19th century and then definitely in the early 20th century with Einstein, we have a whole, uh, well, it, anyways, it began in the 19th century, but it became part of physics in, in uh, the early 20th century with Einstein. We now have a whole new paradigm in physics, and we were supposed to get a whole new paradigm in philosophy. And yet, strangely enough, with politics, we didn't. Um, going back to the French Revolution, you had the two factions, of course. You had the right, which sat uh, on the right of the French General Assembly, and you had the left, which was on the left. The right sided with the king, the left sided against the king. Okay, now there's been a lot of mutation in that paradigm ever since, with the 19th century, you had the right becoming less monarchist and more and more uh, supportive of the capitalists and the robber barons. You had the left becoming less classically Republican and more and more socialist. Um, we've had so many permutations and, and changes as to what these things mean that I argue that they're, no, that they're no longer useful terms. And I think Robert Anton Wilson did in his characteristic style and creative uh, uh, way of expressing himself. I'm going to do it in my usual wooden stumbling way, which some of you know and love. Others, well, if this is your first time, sorry about that. But that's me. So um, that's the other thing that, that um, a true independent thinker has to accept is they have to accept, accept themselves as who they are. Uh, just like Robert Anton Wilson did in his way and just like I do in my way. Um, there's an interesting, also, a, kind of another way of looking at the idea of Euclidean versus non-Euclidean left-right spectrums. And that is that while we think of the left-right spectrum as Euclidean, there may be people who realize that it is not Euclidean and are able to manipulate that non-Euclidean nature of right and left. Now, that's a pretty tall claim, and I'm going to explain what I mean. And I think that this is, in, again, in the spirit of Robert Anton Wilson, it might be what he meant also. If we take the assumption that we have a political spectrum where we have this group at this end and that group at that end, and that they are constantly at war with one another, you always have to look at the invisible hand, in a sense, manipulating both. Traditionally, in the very origins of the right-left spectrum, you had the right, which again t favored hierarchy, it favored traditional obedience, it favored top-down rule. Now, that was the right in its origins. Um, it favored the monarchy. And then you had the center, which was classical liberalism, i.e. Thomas Jefferson, um, John Stuart Mill, Adam Smith to some extent. Um, and then you have the left, which would be Jean-Jacques Rousseau, uh, the revolutionaries. Eventually, both the Marxists and the anarchists would be considered on the left. Now, that is an honest political spectrum. I think it's outdated, but it is honest. What we now have is a political spectrum that has classical liberalism on the, on the far right and that has dissent against the corporate state on the far left. That is a problem. 
And the reason that that is a problem is that unlike in the 18th and 19th centuries when you had radicalism and classical liberalism, meaning what we would today call libertarianism, essentially joined hand in glove, whatever differences they may have had, they at least joined together against the monopolies, against the monarchies, against the top-down tyrannies. You now do not have that as a possibility. Because you're going to have the Occupy Wall Street people constantly arguing against the Tea Party people. Um, and that is not conducive to any kind of joining together, the way that the political spectrum has been, I would say, manipulated. Um, plus, you have all the social issues that are thrown in there to further divide people over things that are really irrelevant And when you really get right down to it. I mean, um, let's face it, they don't affect people's lives in any appreciable sense. And yet they are made into the issue by the media um, who drum up, are you for, are you against, um, and also by the politicians who've been getting a free ride. They don't have to do anything. They just have to have the correct stand on um, the evolution in schools or homosexuality or whatever it is. And the correct stand, of course, uh, for far right wingers will be um, whatever it is on a particular issue. And then they don't have to do anything to help the economy. They can, in fact, they continue to fleece the nation to reward their corporate friends. Um, there are similar manipulations on the other end of the spectrum that we can get into in another video at some point for at, at another time and at another place. The point I'm saying is really the whole political spectrum that we have today is false. It's been engineered by various forces to divide people. Both sides, uh, both camps may believe in freedom. Both camps may believe that we have a problem. Let's face it, how are the radicals and the classical liberals going to ally against the military-industrial complex if they're divided amongst themselves by this perception of being on the extreme end of a spectrum? Um, there are similar... It also gets into the whole secularism and religion division. That's another thing that's been thrown. That's the primary thing that's really been thrown in there to really, really mess things up. I mean, I'll give you a for instance. You know that there's a manipulation when mystics for hundreds, perhaps thousands of years have been talking about ideas of parallel universes and other worlds and other dimensions. And then you have, again, just like with the political left and, and libertarians often saying the same thing, but then attacking each other, you then have physicists coming in there and saying the very same things, but then the religious people and the physicists attack one another. And you're supposed to take sides on all these ridiculous YouTube debates of neither camp of which knows philosophy or cares. Where's the manipulation here? The manipulation is the third hand manipulating both camps. So you have religion thrown in, you have race thrown in. Um, obviously, if you go to uh, a, a lot of the YouTube channels that will talk about things like the military-industrial complex or banking manipulations, they'll then throw in some anti-Semitic thing or some anti-this group thing or some anti-that group thing. In fact, if you go back to the very origins of anti-Semitism in Nesta Webster, what was she saying? She was saying... Um, like about the French Revolution, that the peasants should have just accepted the king, and if you just they just hadn't been for these radicals and rabble rousers, they would have accepted the king. Well, that's no different than people who who besmirch uh, videos like this one for saying that well, we're riling people up. If it weren't for truth tellers, then um, people in the United States would just accept their fate. I mean, I don't see a difference. The fact of the matter is, whether it's race, whether it's religion, we're all the same human species. And we're all going to go down together unless we do join together. Jew and Gentile, black and white, left siding together with libertarians, let's say on common ground issues here. If we don't do this, we're going to go down as a planet. We already see the signs in terms of the change of uh, the in our ecology. All right, I know some of you who might be attracted to this video, who are libertarians, might deny climate change. I made some videos on that. I suggest you watch them. The point being, you know, I don't want to get sidetracked here. The political spectrum is false. People need to wake up. 
And I know I didn't say it as well as Robert Anton Wilson did, but at least I tried the way that I do. See, it's just true over.